Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video I'm going to show you how to successfully flash your B550 Unify using just a USB stick. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to show you how to do a BIOS flashback on your MSI B550 Unify. Uh, this is pretty much the same principle for almost every single motherboard from the MSI range that supports the BIOS flashback. So if you've got a slightly different model, maybe you've got the Unify X, etc., then the actual process itself is pretty much identical. The one thing, obviously, that will be different is the actual BIOS flash file, which we will be linking in the video description below. So uh, to make life easier for some of you, we'll put that in there for you so you can click on that directly. But some of the things you will need for this process, obviously, your motherboard it doesn't have to be anything populated on it. So ideally, we don't want a processor, RAM, NVMe slots, anything like that. Make sure, essentially, if you can, it's just the bare board. You'll also need a FAT32 formatted USB stick, and also you'll need a power supply of some sort, which will provide you with the 24 pin power connector and also a four, eight or 16 pin supplementary CPU power connector. Other than that, that is pretty much it, apart from a working computer with access to the internet and also a USB port to transfer the BIOS from your computer onto the USB stick. So first of all, let's go over to the computer and we'll download the appropriate BIOS file. Okay, so on our computer, this is my uh, regular Windows desktop. So the first thing we wanna do is to get our USB stick and put it into an appropriate port on the computer. So that's installed. As you can see, this drive is currently blank, but what we'll do is anyway, as we always do, is right click on the drive and we'll choose format, reset to defaults. Make sure you've got FAT32, that is very important. Doesn't work with NTFS, doesn't work with XFAT has to be FAT32. Allocation size, you can set to default if you wish, and uh, you can if you want add a volume label. I generally don't, so just go ahead and leave your settings same as that. So click on start. Next, we'll get the warning saying formatting will erase all data on this disk. So obviously if there's anything on the disk that you actually need, get it off before you do this. When you're ready, click OK. Then you should get the message saying format is complete. You can click OK and then you can close down that window. So that's our USB stick prepared. Next thing to do is to get the BIOS file. So what we'll do is open up a browser. You can use any browser you choose. Next thing to search for is MSI B550 Unify. As you can see, I've already done that before. So I'll just click on that one to speed things up. And we want the top link. So ideally something from msi.com. Again, all the links for this will be in the video description. So you can check them out there. Always worth doing, make sure you have actually got the right board, so make sure it's a Meg B550 Unify. If you're not entirely sure, you can do a quick visual check on this site, make sure it looks like the board you've actually got. When you're happy you've got that, scroll back up to the top and go over to the Support tab. Click on the Support tab, and here we've got all of our support. So you can find Compatibility, so if you're not sure if you actually need this BIOS update or not, click on Compatibility, choose by CPU, and then you can go through and see which processors are listed, and which particular BIOS version was needed for that particular processor. And we're actually using a Ryzen 9 3900, so at the moment that's gonna be absolutely fine, which is that one there, 3900X. So ours was fine from BIOS version 10. And if we go back to the actual BIOS, so version 10 was actually the initial release, so that's absolutely fine. There has been an update, as we can see there, so version 11, which adds a GSA code update and also supports SAM technology. So that's the resizable bar function for graphics cards, etc. And also if we wanted to, we could go with the beta version. Now it doesn't actually state what is new in the beta version. So uh, we'll leave that as it is, but we're definitely gonna upgrade it to a slightly newer version. So what you need to do is click on the down arrow, which basically is for downloading. And then you'll get this pop-up, depending on your browser, it may automatically download. So this is giving you your location that you want to actually download the file to. So I generally choose desktop and click on save. And that should take a few moments. So we can minimize this window. And now we can see on our desktop, we've got our WinRAD file. So with this, you can right click on it and choose extract to, uh, however you want to extract it, whether using Windows built-in tool or whether you're using WinZip, etc. just extract the entirety. And then in the folder itself, there is another folder within a folder and you've got a text file, which will be information on how the flash is processed and the version numbers, etc. And the most important one is this one here. So this is our 110 file. So what we need to do now is to actually rename that file and we'll rename it to msi.rom. So click on it. You can actually as well, if you go into view, make sure that you've got file name extensions 
enabled, just so you can see the file name extensions, and also hidden items just in case if you can't see this. So going back, we'll rename file, and we'll call it MSI in uppercase, then a dot, then ROM, and then delete the rest of the file extension. Now we can just hit enter or click somewhere else off the screen and you'll get the message saying if you change a file name extension it may become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? And just click yes. Now what we can do is to get this file and we can right click on it, choose cut or copy, and then we want to go into our blank USB drive, right click and choose paste. And there we go, that's transferred the msi.rom file onto our USB stick. So at this point now, what we can do is close down any windows we've got, and you can go down to the bottom and choose to eject the drive. This is a SanDisk Ultra, so we'll click on Eject Ultra. Now we can remove the drive, and we're ready to start the flashing process. Okay, so the next part of this process is to prepare the motherboard and get everything connected. So I'm actually gonna use the motherboard box to uh, bring the motherboard slightly off the deck. You can choose to do that entirely up to you, but I find it a little bit easier to do. So I put the motherboard on a box, so that should prevent static and all those kinds of things. So the next thing we want to do is to go through and connect up all the main parts that we actually need to be connected. So the first one is going to be our supplementary power supply for the CPU, which is our four pin connector, which is one of these. And that attaches to the motherboard in this top corner. Generally, you want to put it into the one closest to the uh, VRM at the top there. So plug that one in. It should only fit in one direction. So if I show you it there, so that is it connected up there, just for reference purposes. And the next one to do is just the 24 pin power connector. Again, power supply wise for this particular process, you don't need a specific power supply as long as it will actually supply voltage of 12 volts, five volts, three volts, etc., through the system, then that's absolutely fine. Uh, this isn't gonna be the power supply I'm gonna use for the end build, but certainly we'll do, uh, do the job for now. You may find when you connect up the power supply for the first time, this one automatically powers on. You may find that your reset or power button just briefly illuminate. Don't worry about that, it's absolutely fine. So next thing to do is to uh, get our USB stick and put it into the actual correct slot on the back of the motherboard. As you can see on the back of this particular board, there is a highlight around the actual port itself so you know which one it is you have to use. So we're gonna go ahead and plug it into there, which is a little bit difficult for me to see from this particular angle. And the next thing to do is to press the BIOS flashback button. So actually on this end section here, there you can see there's two buttons. One is to reset the CMOS and the other one is to flash the BIOS. So all we need to do is to go over and press the bottom one of the two, which is the BIOS flashback, and press it in briefly. After a few seconds, you'll see that the lights at the bottom here will illuminate and also on the top section, if I flip this up a little bit, you can see that the diagnostic LED is now on and we're also in the CPU light section. So this is now reading, you can see that the LED on the back here is flashing away. So that means that the BAS flashback process is taking place. So keep an eye on that. Also keep an eye on the diagnostic LED in this top corner and that will give you visual representation of what is actually going on with the system. So essentially now all we need to do is uh, pretty much sit and wait. So we're gonna let it carry on reading the BIOS off the file, which is what it's currently doing in that flashing state. I'm pretty sure with this board, the flashing on the flashback button will actually increase a little bit. And then when the system's finished, it'll do a reboot. But certainly we'll leave it as it is for now and just let it get on and do its thing. You can probably also see as well the uh, the actual USB's LED is also flashing as well. So there we go, the system is automatically shut off and is now rebooting again. And as you can see now, the CMOS flashback light is now extinguished, uh, where are we up here? So that is off now and the CMOS reset button is on. So that is basically turned off, come back on, and it's now got into the section where it's unable to boot because obviously it's uh, not got a motherboard or processor or anything like that installed. So as you can see at the top there, the white LED is stuck in the CPU section. We've still got zero, zero on the CMOS information light, and we've still got two LEDs on our reset and power on off buttons here. But now that the USB has stopped flashing, 
it's on a, a constant LED. Well, basically it's like in a standby mode if you can just about make out the uh, blue LED there on the SanDisk drive. So that is in its kind of uh, standby mode, so it's not being accessed at the moment. And also, obviously, the light's gone off there. So now what we can do is to uh, turn it off completely. So we can use either the power button or we can just disconnect the power supply. And then we'll try a processor on there and make sure it's actually taken the update. Okay, so we've got the system set back up again. So we've got a Ryzen 3 3100, uh, MSI GT 1030 graphics card, a couple of sticks of V-Cutter RAM, and our basic power supply plugged in again. Everything's powered up and the LED is ready to press on there. So let's go for the first time boot. So the diagnostic on the actual motherboard, the LED, is going through the various stages. Now, because we've done a BAS flash, it's going to go through and try and do things like the memory training, all that kind of stuff. So you'll generally find on your first boot after a BAS flash, there will be a little bit of a, a wait. So if you don't get a display straight away, don't panic too much. It's just uh, the way that AMD motherboards work and memory training and all that kind of stuff. It'll probably even shut down possibly or reboot itself to try and get the right settings. So again, just let it go through. I can see now the diagnostic LEDs are going through the various cycles. So we've got through RAM, we're now stuck on VJ and now we're going up to boot. So in theory, we should get a signal uh, anytime now. And finally, there we go. There is the uh, the Meg splash there, because I should have pressed the delete key. Well, no need, so it's gone in. So there we are. There's the MSI Click BIOS version five, and it's showing our processor, etc. And now it's showing the updated BIOS version. So that's E7D13AMS.110, or version 11 for short. So that's all worked fine. Uh, we need to go through and do some tweaking now and setting up. But uh, pretty much for you guys, that is all you need to know. So if it doesn't boot up first time, obviously you can just turn it off, turn it back on again. Sometimes AMD systems will be a little bit funny in the way they work. So yeah, do try those things first. If you've got any comments or questions, then feel free to leave those in the comments section below. And if this content has been helpful for you and it's uh, possibly saved your bacon, then please do consider buying a Mike's Unboxing t-shirt, Mike's Unboxing screwdriver pen set, or even the Mike's Unboxing dual action pen all of which help the channel immensely. And if you want to find out more details there, you can find that in the video description or also from our Discord chat. So I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.